So I'm back round more in front of the lathe now and I'm just going to start peeling out the base. Again, just moved up to the shoulders to move out. So now I'll start moving this out here, this uh, step, always working out. Now I'm just using my thumb, I'm peeling out, moving my body, but I'm also moving my thumb back so I can move the cutter back this way. Don't need to hold it, uh, you know, I don't need to hold on to it with white knuckles, don't need to. The cut's set up, the full rest is taking all the work. Again, now I'm just moving around my body around and I do exactly the same thing. Opening out the base, back into the hole, moving my body around. Okay, so let me move the camera around a bit. So I'm now on the depth. You can see I've got shavings, but they're fairly short. And uh, got a good surface finish in there. I'll zoom in, I don't know if you can see in that light. But the surface finish is very acceptable. Um, because we've, we've angled the edge of the, the cutter over and we're slicing through the fibres, what we're doing is we're blending with the forces that are coming down. If we have the tool horizontal, then you've got a piece of metal meeting wood and uh, obviously the metal's going to win and if the fibres can't cope with it, they'll just tear. So by rotating the tool over, we're blending with the down force and we're cutting the wood how it wants to be cut and we're slicing it. Okay, and we get a shaving. Letting the tool do the work. Don't need to fight with it. Take fine cuts. Little bit of uh, judder there, that's because the, the cut I've got is quite aggressive in the overhang, so I just rotate the tool over a bit more and just take a finer slice. Lessen the forces. Now also I need to move the handle around so I keep this cutting edge here, just move the shavings, keep the cutting edge here as perpendicular to this surface as, as I can. Um, because I've got the camera just right off my shoulder I'm unable to get the tool over so I'm just going to move the camera again and show you and explain that. So as I'm cutting with the tool I start off with it perpendicular to the base, the tool handle, although it doesn't look like it's perpendicular on the video, that's just the angle. So um, it's basically running straight through the spindle axes of the lathe and then as I cut around I use this fulcrum point here to move the handle around so it doesn't matter if I'm in an inside of a small hole exactly the same thing but what I'm doing is I'm keeping this cutting edge as much as possible perpendicular to the surface and then as I come up this wall I pull the cutter out if I was hollowing and I keep it cutting on the sweet spot here if I keep the tool perpendicular to the surface or rather parallel to the spindle axis of the lathe. As I come up this wall here, the cut runs right up around the left hand side. And basically it will be supported less by the tool rest and I'll get more twitching and it won't cut as efficiently. So as with a scraper or um, any other tool, um, if we're using a bowl gauge on the inside of a bowl, we keep moving the handle around to keep the bevel engaged and we keep it perpendicular to the surface of the wood. Same with the hollowing tool, we keep coming up like this. Okay, so uh, when, you, when you're using any tool, or rather the super ring, um, don't just go across and pull out like that, although you can do if you're doing a push-pull cut, 
we want to get in the habit of moving the tool around, swiveling our body from the hips, get a nice arc to follow the base of the bowl. So now the curve of the bowl is going downhill here, now I'm cutting downhill so I'm cutting as I push in. If I try cutting uphill then I'm just pushing into the end grain, so I'm cutting downhill here and I roll up the base and then cut on the out downhill on the base. And then light cut up here and then the cut downhill. So check for wall thickness, it's pretty good. So that's that piece roughed out ready for seasoning. Okay, literally 10 minutes, um, 12 minutes to, to hollow a bowl of that size, end grain, um, season it. But what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm just gonna show you on this in the next small video, how I set up and use the scraping tip as if the piece had been seasoned and finished turned. Um, of course the option, the other option I've got is I can take this down all the way around to between uh, an eighth and a quarter of an inch, so three to six mil thickness, and then uh, finish it with the scraper outside and in, sand it and oil it to slow down the seasoning, keep it in a cool place for a couple of weeks, and um, it'll be seasoned. I would take the uh, the spigot off before I uh, before I oil it, so we can take the thin wall with the tool just as easily. Um, but I'm going to season this so that I can turn it true again because there will be a slight amount of movement so I'll, I'll um, set up the camera and we'll go through how I use the, uh, the scraper with the extender on the inside and show you how to do um, a fine shear cut to give you a very good uh, finish. Okay so uh, that's how I use the super ring, set it up, sharpen it and uh, use it either just for a push-pull cut or a peeling or a cut from a fulcrum outwards. All we need to remember is to work with the wood Okay, so nice slicing action, angle the tool down, pick up the sweet spot, you'll soon feel it. You don't need to apply lots of force, um, keep the tool sharp, let the wood cut, and always work downhill. So from the inside out to this here, if you've got a slight undercut here like this, where the form starts to close back in on itself, we work downhill from that way. Okay, it really is as simple as that. Now I appreciate I've been turning for some time and people will say, well, it makes it look easy. It is easy to use. Um, most tools are easy to use if you know how to set them up. So make sure that uh, you've got it set up right on the tool rest, handle slightly higher, cutting on centre height, rotate anti-clockwise. Deeper you go, if the tool starts to chatter or give you some uh, sort of feel excess force, just rotate it a bit more anti-clockwise and move your body around to keep the cutting edge perpendicular, which means that the forces go up the tool shaft and the tool rest and not twist. Okay, so hopefully I've covered everything that you need. Um, but if there are any specifics that you're not quite sure about, then email me and I can add um, something later to this video at the end just to clarify those points. Okay, so uh, next video I'll show you how I'm using the finishing scraper with the extender um, on the inside of this form, although it's not seasoned. Um, and we'll look at some other bits and pieces such as using the super ring on seasoned wood. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed the video and um, see you next time.